I wasn't a fan of Kobe Bryant. He seemed a, a cocky Michael Jordan wannabe full of premature, arrogant, wild declarations of greatness. His early basketball career was full of controversy, scandals, feuds with teammates and coaches. No, Kobe Bryant wasn't a hero of mine. But he did become a role model. During the second half, or the second part of, of Bryant's career, he seemed intent on becoming a... Uh, a better man, his his best self. He seems wanting to move on from mistakes, not be defined by his past errors. And whether that was because of those mistakes, or just his internal drive to be better, I don't I don't know. Whether it was as a basketball player, as a father, a children's author, an Academy Award winner for the best animated film, Bryant seemed to strive to be the best that he could be, and to live a full life. For that, I have tremendous respect. Maybe it's his age. At 41, he's younger than me. But his death, so suddenly and at a point in his, uh, in his life where he seemed so content and see, seemed to be on just at the top of his world, to me it serves as a great reminder that the people around you, the people that you care about, well, they should know how you feel. So it might be all that really matters. Oh, you know... So we recorded this episode a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've had it almost ready to go and uh, thought I'd re-record the intro uh, in the wake of uh, Kobe Bryant's death. Those of you who don't know, Kobe Bryant is uh, one of the all-time great basketball players uh, and as a fan of the NBA and, and basketball, it's, a, uh, it's an event that um, I've spent quite a bit of time thinking about uh, this morning. Um, the topic we've got today is about death. It seems poignant. Uh, that we are talking about it today uh, and in hindsight there's some things that we talked about that um, I think we're really going to try and follow through on so I really hope you enjoy the conversation this is me talking with Joel and Simon let's go <laughs> uh, Joel yes. you've been thinking about death yeah well um I'm not beyond it, am I? In in, uh, in our very early podcast, I asked the question, could I have your skulls if you died? Right. I thought you were actually just going to stop then on, yeah, well. <laughs> oh, you can think about that. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I do have a, yeah, a morbid fascination, but this is this uh, is not inspired by my fascination with, with skulls. Um, I went to a funeral, which was um, really sad. Uh, a, a 27-year-old... Man, if you like, when you're our age, it just he's just a kid, yeah. you know, which is funny because <clears throat> I wonder if we get to sixty and say, oh, he's forty, oh, he's just, just a kid. A kid. <laughs> but he he really was just a kid, and I didn't know him very well. I just knew his um his parents, and um, I'd met him a couple of times, but it was it was a really moving experience. There was a couple of things that happened that just kind of made me extremely emotional. Um, he was obviously a young fella, so there was, and he was a musician. So there was a bunch of guys with long hair and you know tight black jeans, moustaches, and and facial hair that just smelled like cigarettes and whiskey, <laughs> like that, really strong. That obviously had a really big night the night before, um, and were all really deeply moved by this passing of of their best mate, and um, and they all just cried at different different stages in the front row, just cried and cried, and so I was sitting behind them and couldn't help but to start crying with them you know it was um it, it was a it was a surreal situation um and a, a lot of my tears were for the parents because I just you know I knew them and I looked at, at, at the kid and just thought oh imagine losing your own kid you know like not cool um but then I I kind of transferred it back to myself and thought imagine not being here tomorrow um this guy had left behind recordings so that they were actually playing his his music at the funeral, which was yeah. beautiful. He was, it was and some he was just a funny guy. He's one of those really, <clears throat> really likable 
guys that you could just get by all of the clips and by all of the people that spoke. He was just that guy that influenced everyone and he was fun, he was quirky and, and everyone kind of had some sort of big impact and I, I, I didn't even know him but I thought, I like you. <laughs> mm. I only met you once and just by all this, you seem like a really cool guy. And he'd left a heap behind. There was a heap there that they got to that they played and we saw lots of him and I kind of learnt more about him. And I thought, if I went, like, what are my kids going to have, you know? like, And, uh, and so I thought, I'm going to do a playlist. As, as one of the things that, so, that I'm so passionate about, music is, is just so important to me, I thought, I'm going to do a playlist. And then I started thinking about it. I thought, how am I going to do this? Just songs, just songs that I like. And then I thought, no, I could almost give them advice through songs. <laughs> so, so the first one, which I already did with Ruby, um, is by Yesaya called... Um, let me just get it up. <clears throat> it's called Ambling Alp. But in the chorus, he's like, stick up for yourself, son, and never mind what anybody else done. And it's just a nice little little tune. They're, they're a bit different, but I love that whole walk your own path and um, and also take responsibility, you know? Yeah. Stick up for yourself. Don't 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 mind what these other guys are doing. So uh, I'd always... Uh, I'd always uh, pass that on to Ruby and she still hears that and and I thinks uh, thinks about me when when she uh, hears that then I started thinking about sort of as the different ages that they'll be like they'll be a they'll be an adolescent at some stage they'll want to kick against society and you just can't go past uh, killing in the name of <laughs> you know if if and I, I guess I've probably got to write a I've probably got to write a document to accompany this to mm-hmm. sort of go you know, when yeah. this is how you're feeling, put this on and stick your fingers up at the world, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's authority's not always right. Sometimes you have to say, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, 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 what else did I put in there? Uh, try a little tenderness, Ot- Otis Redding. A, you can't not have that guy as, no. as something that your kids listen to. And this is the thing, you think that you're going to be here for your kids. You think that you're going to get to show them what a good song is, you know, to, uh, have a, have a beer with them. You know, to, you think you're going to get to do all these things. You might not. Mm. Yeah. You might not. It's interesting. <clears throat> I, I, I love that idea. And, you know, again, being so into music, just love that idea of, of, of sharing that. Um, I was, I was thinking about today when you, you sort of suggested the idea of, of, of having a chat about this. And I, I was really conscious though of your kids, maybe not, appreciating it enough I'm not, I'm not saying what do you mean you don't like Rage Against the Machine what is wrong with you but almost like looking at it the other way like it's not forced in a way but that they have to listen to it and go oh I should like this because dad did I don't know do you think that, would that be an impact do you think they'd just enjoy it for the sake of don't you think as parents you're resigned to the fact that at some point your kids are going to hate you when they're teenagers they're going to rebel mm-hmm. against you they're going to go through all of that sort of stuff all that angst all that stuff all that you don't know anything I, we all know better than you, you you're you so stupid that's going to happen at yeah. some point but at some point later on they're going to appreciate all the stuff that you did for them yeah so I think you're not doing it for that moment of I'm playing this for you for the first time and that's going to change your world yeah true you're actually probably playing it. You're probably doing it for that moment when you're not here, and they are listening to it in thirty or forty years, and they go, "Ah, oh, now I get that. I, I get. get I get what yeah, they yeah. mean now." And just to have as well, like for me, it's a it, it, the idea would be that it would give some sense of wisdom. It, it, it probably no, wouldn't, just, but I love the idea that they have something. It's like Dad actually made the, these songs were made for me yeah um you know for for whatever reason uh, I, I got beyond the narrative at one point and just thought if i'm doing a playlist for my kids i want them to to know everything i want them to really hear some of yeah. the stuff that's really moved me there's no advice in it it's just fucking listen to this <laughs> yeah you know i like this and if i'm gone they you don't have to they, they won't even have to like it they will like the fact that it's there yeah you know and they'll listen to it and go that's a part of that is dad you know like there's got to be some connection to dad through that song so yeah it's a great idea to to have that as you said you know you you never know when when you're gonna be here or not be here Mm. and to have something in place and um so for the last well four years jude turns five in march i've written him a a letter 
at the end of every year, which oh. just encompasses and tells him all the things that haven't. Uh, which I think, as as he probably gets older, is going to be like, yeah, Dad, I know that <laughs> happened. Um, but, you know, like, you, know like, you don't want to give him one at the end of his 16th year. And so and then we went here like, you know, Dad, I know we went there. You know, as you said, much later down the line, it'll be, yeah. it'll be much more appreciated. You needed but... much more private time in your rooms. Not sure what for, but... <laughs> we spent a lot of time in there. Um you, you might find that the, the idea of them changes. You could still yeah. write them every year, but it might, yeah. it might yeah. be you talking to him yeah. rather than you telling him what his year was. Yeah, and just and different things and even just, you know, talking about my experiences and, and, and that's, you know, so, um, so what I sort of do is I have little notes, an idea, a notes thing on my phone where throughout the year I just write things, whether we travel somewhere or we go somewhere or he does something or... Um, you know, especially when he was younger, I, I was actually quite good with it in the first couple of years of making notes of the little things he said and, you know, words that he got wrong or what he would say for, you know, different, different items that he'd get, he'd say a completely different word or, um, and the general thought is that he'll have that access to that. If I'm still around, mm. he'll still get access to that probably when he's 18 or something, you know, it won't be a massively exciting 18th birthday present to an 18 year old but again no, I don't know um, I reckon yeah in my experience hold on to it because mum gave me some stuff when I left at 18 yeah and you, you lose it it's yeah. not important to you then well, no, so she's held on to stuff and given me stuff recently where I'm, I'm taking good care of it and really yeah. appreciating it more well, yeah it's interesting because that was my thought I was like how am I gonna how is this gonna work how do I how do I do this do I print this and keep them in a folder and give them to him so I actually, I set him up an email account and I email him to him at the end of every year. So from my account, I email him to him. So he's, but I'm like, when he's 18, is that even going to be a thing? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's weird to think. Yeah. And now I'm like, this is so cool. When I went in the other day and it's got the first four, it's got the first four in there and or the first three. I'm currently in the process of writing it. It normally gets posted. I normally email it around about February. It takes me, <laughs> it takes me a while. I, I try and do it. Over the Christmas period, because I got time off from work, I always try and get it written. But it was it was great when you made that suggestion about having a you said having a document to go along with the songs that you mm. wanted. It really linked my mind to that can start happening and saying to him at the end of each one, go and listen to this. Mm. You know, because in each one I've Jude's always loved his music, um, and at the end of each one, I've written a whole thing about what happened during the year. I always include sports stuff, so how Liverpool went and how the Tigers went. <laughs> Just as a bit of fun, because it's always rubbish, normally. Um, and then I put, you liked, and these are the things you like. These are the you know movies you liked watching. This is the TV shows you liked, and these are the songs. Oh, that's really cool. Um, so it's just, so he could even then, in 16 years' time, less than that, go and find that song that mm. you liked at this point or whatever. So... Um, but yeah, I, I thought it would be cool as well now to sort of tack on the end. Here's, here's a list of five songs for you to go and discover this year or whatever. And just, yeah, so. That's really cool. Yeah, that's just something when, when you mentioned it that I've sort of managed to put in place for him. So that's, yeah, it's nice to have that thought that he will have that. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Cohen, well, I've got to bloody write two in it. <laughs> I don't think I'll write one now. Cohen's yeah. two, you know, two months old. I'm not going to write much in a two month period for this one. <laughs> End of 2019, all good. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. I think part of it for me is probably egotistical. You, th you think you've got something to offer. <laughs> like, you think that without you, they won't actually navigate life and become adults and and get by, um, which they will. You know, I, 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 I saw uh, there was a, I think it was Bill Murray, maybe someone like him. There was a show where he got cancer and he was dying. And he started making videos for his kids. And it was his, because they, they were very little, um, his had a shave. Always do it this way, never this way. Oh, yeah, I've seen <laughs> and, that. Yeah, it's a, and, yeah, and, yeah, and it made that. me think, oh, geez, that's cool uh, that you know that you're not going to be there and you're setting some things up that you would have loved to have taught your 15-year-old son how to shave. Do you know, even, <clears throat> you know, even just footage... I mean, Chris has got a documentary. Which is awesome. <laughs> if Thomas you needs bastard! <laughs> we need to get. I don't know what you guys have got, but I've got the professionally made clip. But even as much as 
this modern day and age, it's all technology. Everyone's got phones, whatever. You know, Amy's dad passed away two years ago. We've we've got virtually nothing mm. of him. And the other day, I was scrolling through my videos, and it was a video of Jude waking up on Christmas morning a couple of years ago, and he comes out and Amy's dad's in it, and I just lost it. And I it took me a long time before I showed Amy. So I was like, I don't even know how I can take my phone over to her and go and watch, you know, watch this. Because her dad's talking on it mm -hmm. and his voice comes out and you haven't heard his voice in. So I think it is special to do that. Even if it is just silly video, it doesn't have to be you shaving. Just be doing something and, yeah. um, you know, have some... Uh, dad and I always, when, when mum and dad come over, dad and I always try and record songs together. And sit together and just play five songs on the guitar, sing them together and just record them and have them on a USB somewhere. Yeah. So I know now and I feel so happy that I started that because I know I've got that. No matter what happens in the future, that's there mm -hmm. somewhere for the boys as well or just for myself, you know, whenever, mm. um, you know, my dad goes or whatever, to have that in place already is like, okay, sweet. So it's something you should, you know, I agree with you. Just get it out of there. Start filming yourself. Mm. I'll make a documentary of you. <laughs> Right, I'll do one of you. <laughs> there you go. Might take me two years to edit. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so much stuff. That's the thing. It'd be too much stuff. <laughs> Is there anything in particular, Chris, that you think, like you'd want to leave? No, you've all got me thinking. Like, I haven't yeah. done anything in particular um, for it, but I, I guess I've, in the last, well, since Thomas has been born, even slightly before then, got realised that whether it's writing or doing a podcast or whatever, it's just a way of me thinking through stuff. Yeah. And so a lot of my thoughts are out there. Right, they're published, yeah. they're accessible there. So if I was to not be here, there's a lot of what I've thought and done that's accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you've got me thinking about a really awesome podcast. <laughs> I don't think, imagine going on to having a Spotify list that's got, um, Joel talking about this song and what it means to him and what he wants his son to learn and then there's the song and, and then, then the podcast that goes with it yeah that's freaking awesome that is a very cool idea yeah, yeah. we're on it yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it could be it could be a playlist of of, of you know anyone with a message of this is this is this, this song and yeah, cause a, it, a message it, about the song and then here's the it's, it's here's such the an interesting thing because you know, from my perspective, I've you know been so lucky to spend so much time with my my own father, and mm -hmm. I know what my dad loves musically and that sort of stuff. And he's, I mean, all my musical taste essentially comes from him in some way, shape, or form. Probably not the heavy metal, um, but you know, e even things like you know, I've, I've spoken with him about music and what songs you love and songs that, for a funeral. And yeah. so my dad's even told me what songs he wants at his funeral. But that's for a specific purpose. Yeah. You know, that, that I'm sure there's people who would pick songs for their parents because they told them. But that doesn't mean it's their favourite song. It no. doesn't mean it's their favourite music. <clears throat> do you know what I mean? So I know... And that's, that's what I mean. This, this yeah. brought all that up. Like, I said to Sandy, I want you to play this at my funeral. Yeah. And, you know... Is it killing in the name? <laughs> You'd be surprised. She was I surprised. probably wouldn't be surprised. No. <laughs> she was surprised, actually. Okay. Um, but it's that type of stuff where it's like, no, that I, I can't. That's how I want to go out. Like, and no one wants to talk about it. And because of that, no one talks to their kids about it. So kids are not ready for it ever. Yeah. Because they don't talk about it. Um, yeah. Unless they're lucky enough to have, and I say lucky enough. It. it I don't mean lucky enough, but, uh, unless they have that in their life as an experience, that actually gives them an advantage, mm. in, especially if it's a detached person, like a grandparent, you know, or yeah. an uncle or an aunt, that they're not um, as attached to as, as, as parents. They can actually have that conversation of, well, that person's not here anymore. You know, well, that person's died. We have, we have a lot of conversations with Jude yeah. about his grandfather, because again, Amy's, you know, Amy's dad passed two years ago, and, and Jude was aware of him. But I don't think remembers him hugely, um, but talks a lot about him. Mm -hmm. But is is quite in the discussion now about death and what happens. And so you, like he's like, so you never come back. Oh, good, because 
you, yeah, that that's concept you, of, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. never come back. We're like, well, no, you don't. He's like, well, I don't want that to happen to me. So, well, you never know, it might be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what it might be like on the other side? And I'm not saying that. And we keep saying to him, mate, it's a long, long, long time away. You know, you don't yeah. need to worry about that stuff. And it's really hard to have that chat when also at the same time you're saying, but it did happen to this person. Mm. And yes, they're gone. And we're all very sad about it. But we were lucky that we knew them. And, you know, we can think about them and talk about them and enjoy all this stuff. So, but I do think he has, he will benefit from it. Yeah. From at least having those conversations now in his life. Yeah. Did he kind of understands a little bit about unless death. it happens not many parents are going to be like hey did you know people die you <laughs> yeah. know like unless it's it's because it's yeah. not really appropriate and and you know i think we used to people used to grow up with animals more in their in their lives and animals die and that's that's one of the first ways you can look at death i mean max has said do kids die you know because he's so curious and like yeah mate they do sometimes mm. and he looks and i'm like yeah it's really sad and i said and you know you just never know. I said, but you will probably live for a very long time because yeah. you don't want to scare him. No, but exactly. I'm also like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, cause yeah. you, you, that you might experience the death of someone. And, and the fact that I've said that to you now in this safe space helps to prepare you for the fact yeah. that, yeah, that might happen. And it probably won't happen, you know? And if everything goes well, I'll be really old. You'll be a man. That's, that's how we'd like it to happen. But you just never know. And I like, the fact that we've had that conversation you know my mate's got a farm and um he's always killing something on his farm like i've <laughs> seen them you know do a pig and uh, i haven't I haven't been there when they've done a cow but um every year they do something and their kids are all part of it it's it goes yeah it's just yeah. one of these things they see it and they see what happens yeah this was living now it's dead and we're actually going to use it these are the bits that we're going to eat and yeah. uh, you know if you're a meat eater i think you've you, know. you can't go wrong with being honest about the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, as uncomfortable as it mm. might be in the moment, it's only going to be more uncomfortable later on. You know, the whole, you know, um, you know, the pet the pet that died. Yeah. <laughs> you just went to the farm out west. You went to the farm. Next door. <laughs> like that's eventually you're going to have to have that conversation anyway. You know, like so I don't I don't see the the point in putting it off. I mean, I know there's there's harsh truths that you you don't want to just lump on your kids, but you know, acknowledging that you know your life is finite is probably the best way to appreciate it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, for sure. It sounds like the end of a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really good one. <laughs> Do you know what I've been watching? Are we, are we, you're gone? Yeah, I'm going. Oh, yeah, okay, guys. Gotcha. So you you're watching your podcast. What have you been watching? Um, the Inbetweeners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I said uh, in the last podcast, talked about you You think you're watching a shitty show. This is an actual <laughs> shitty show about the, the coming of age, but fuck, it's funny. <laughs> it's And it's easy. So, like, uh, so often Sandy and I scroll through and we, and we can't even find something to watch together. And this, I just said, look, oh, let's, we both kind of, eh, we'll have it. and it was just funny. It was, t- and they're 20 minute episodes. So yeah. it's, if you're about to go to bed and you've watched something heavy, the best way to kind of lighten things up, this British coming of age, anyway, in between us. Get in between us. What's the movie? Have you seen the movie? I've seen both of them now. They, they go to Australia. Yeah. Do they? The, the next one, they're in Australia. That's yeah, just... I never really, I never really watched it, but um, it was very popular with my mates. It reminds yeah. me, there's a character in there called Psy. Yeah. He doesn't remind me of you. There's another character, but the whole thing kind of makes me think of you a little bit. Okay. When you were coming of age, you know, when you were coming of age, and I watched you become a man. <laughs> it just just reminds me of that. <laughs> um, What's on your playlist, Simon? It's a bit different to the in between us. Yeah. Um, Netflix show though. Yeah. Called The Spy. Spy. The Spy, featuring uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> Uh, from Ali G thing uh-huh. and obviously a little chuckle as soon as I said his name <laughs> in a serious role really oh, yeah. seen, see the ad for that he plays a guy called Eli Cohen who's Israeli um, it's set in the 1960s and he's yeah. an Israeli who spy goes, he's, he turns into becomes a spy um, and goes into Syria 
and spies inside Syria for the Israelis. It's fantastic. It's really, and it's based on a true story. It's based on a real guy who who did it. And there are so many just unbelievably tense, nervous moments where he's almost caught or he's almost found out and then somehow he just miraculously manages to talk his way out of it. And he, he, he was he was never a spy in the first place. He was just a, a an office clerk just doing menial work. Yeah. And then it comes across that he gets taken on to do this job. Uh, and it's amazing to see him in, in that kind of role because he plays it really, really well. Are, are um, you just waiting for him to yeah. crack a joke? Yeah. Or mid, mid put on a fluoro yeah. green yeah. Yeah. bikini. Yeah. Just to take the piss or something and just say something about Borat. Yeah. Well, the first and, time I saw Eric Banner um, in a serious... Yeah. And you just wait for him to go, point Boy, nah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, yeah... The, the the shorts came on, on Netflix and we both sort of were keen to watch it. And I was like, I don't know where this is going to go. Like, is it is it going to be like a spoof spy thriller? Like, is it going to be partially scary or, you know, a thriller? But it's it's not. It's a thriller all the way through. It, it sticks with it. There's no there's no real comedy behind it. Um, and, I, and I always love... I love stuff that's based on true events yeah. as well. That, that yeah. always it appeals to me as well, so... Well worth a watch. How about you, Chris? I've been going through the Talking Heads catalogue. Oh, yeah. I actually started end of last year. I think I was talking to you about yeah, it in class. In one, class yeah. I, each year we do a, a song lyric unit. Um, and I I could just about do it blindfolded. I've, I've got like uh, a set playlist of songs that I've, I use every year. And this year I thought I want to just do add a few new things into it. And I had a couple of Talking Heads songs in mind. Because the the lyrical content in you know, David Byrne stuff is just it's it's really clever, but it's got layers. It's got all these different layers. So when you're analysing song lyrics, it's really cool. You know, he's got lots of different stuff to to be able to pull apart. And I started listening to to the songs I knew, and then I Spotify, of course. Yeah. And then it comes up. Oh, oh, that album. I'm just gonna get that album and listen. To it. Gee, that's really good. And then, oh, not the album. And I've just over the summer holidays, I've just been going through Talking Heads, Talking Heads, Talking Heads, and it's um, it's quite an amazing evolution of a band, a band that was uh, pigeonholed as um, they they came out of New York during the punk uh, American yeah. punk boom, and were pigeonholed as a punk band, <laughs> but weren't really punk at all. But when you listen to that early stuff, you go, oh, yeah, I can sort of see that punk element, element in it. That you know, I can see that underlying you know, you know genre there. Um, and then this um, metamorphosis into a, a, a pop band singing about stuff that's just not pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, and it, yeah. yeah, and the whole time you just know, you just don't know whether David Byrne is just completely tongue in cheek, taking the piss out of everybody, or whether he's like, yeah, you know, this this genius song lyric writer who's doing, you know, just doing this unique and awesome stuff. It's it's just going through all of it. It's been um, it's been a real musical journey. Yeah. Mm. It's great when you, I think it's awesome sometimes when you discover a, a, a band that have been around for a long time mm. and you can then go through mm. the back catalogue. I'm not saying you discovered them, but, um, you know, sometimes you discover bands who have long since dissipated and yeah. just finished, yeah. but to be able to go through that back catalogue and have four or five albums where you just go, oh, holy shit, I'm loving yeah. all of this. Yeah, because really cool. there's always those songs that aren't on the Greatest Hits albums. Yeah, that are awesome songs, and that's like I was always familiar with Talking Heads because I've got older brother and sister, so um, they were popular in the you know really at their peak probably the mid eighties mm. when I was you know sort of seven, eight, nine, ten, you know in that age group. So I was familiar with a lot of their biggest hits, but not with you know those those hidden gems on those yeah. LPs and stuff like that. And so yeah, it's been awesome. Cool. Hmm. All right, let's ask for another Ready? one. Done. Hey, if you've listened this far, then you're one of the people that we're doing this for. And if you've gotten this far and you're listening again, then perhaps you know someone else who might enjoy the podcast, uh, despite our best efforts. Word of mouth is really the only way that we seem to be growing. Um, And uh, we're so satisfied when we bump into people and they say, oh, when's the next podcast coming up? I've really been enjoying it. So if you know someone who you think would enjoy our podcast, can you please recommend it to them? 
Um, remember that all the music you're listening to on the Dad Regime is courtesy of Dora Jackson. Please support her. Uh, links in the show notes. See you next time. Thank you.